industrial workshops. And uh, my name is Janne Paaso, and I'm acting as the coordinator of the XMINE, XMINE project. I work for VTT Technical Research Center of Finland. And uh, could somebody, somebody please confirm that you are seeing the presentation? It's all visible, Janne. Okay, great. The XMINE project uh, has a duration of for 45 months and uh, 15 partners in nine countries. And the big thing of the XMINE project is a large scale demonstration of new sensing methods uh, with in smart exploration, selective drilling, and optimal extraction. And uh, it's uh, funded under the Horizon 2020 program of uh, the European Commission. Okay, and this is the agenda of our uh, final event today. And the ag agenda has been uh, divided into two sessions. The morning session from 9 o'clock to 11.30 is devoted to the sensors and prototypes. And in the beginning, we will have uh, some welcoming words uh, from Jukka Hast, who is uh, the research manager at the VTT Techn uh, Technical Research Center of Finland. And uh, then we will hear, hear uh, three presentations about the XMIND sensor development and the prototype development and have a short break. And then have presentations about the XMIND prototypes in the mining value chain. And uh, the uh, morning session will be concluded, concluded with a summary and discussion. And uh, then we are going to have uh, the lunch break. And after the lunch break, we'll continue at 1 p.m. And uh, there we will have a presentation about the 3D modeling in the XMIND project. And then the industrial workshop part of uh, the Astral Medet mine with an uh, SRM company presentation and uh, about the pilots and then a break and uh, the others, other mines presentations, summaries of their pilots. And then we will hear about the exploitation and impacts in the XMINE project. And uh, finally, we are going to have uh, the expert panel discussion with uh, these uh, mining industry exper experts. And uh, we are planning to conclude the meeting at uh, 4 o'clock p.m. And this is to stress that uh, we have uh, reserved some more time for the Asaral Medet mine because they haven't had uh, their industrial workshop, and this is partly their industrial workshop. Some practical things about the meeting: the event will be recorded, and uh, by participating, you give your consent for recording. You can ask questions in the chat, but unfortunately, we do not uh, allow. Uh, direct conversation during the, this event. Um, Mr. Stefan Sadbom, our moderator, will collect the questions and uh, they will be, be asked from the presenters after each presentation if there's time. If there's no time, we will uh, answer the questions uh, before the breaks. And if some questions uh, are let un unanswered, we will answer them later on and uh, we put the answers on the on the website you know, with uh, questions and on anonymized so that uh, we don't show who asked the question. Okay, but uh, let's let's go uh, to the um, first part of the agenda. Welcoming verse for session one. Um, uh, excuse me, Jan. Uh, um, I get messages from some visitors. They can't get audio. Uh, Stefan, did you say that they, they cannot hear us? 
Exactly. Some people say they don't can't hear us. So, Maria, can you check? Uh, well, I'm hearing. Um, there's not much I can do if people can't hear, but uh, yeah, okay. So, Janne can hear me as well. So, uh, there might be something in in the other end. Yeah. So, so can people confirm via the chat if they can hear? Okay, so in the meanwhile, while the people comment on the chat if they can hear or not, uh, I guess we should continue. So uh, please, uh, Jukka, the floor is yours. Yes. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Jukka Hast, and uh, I work as a research manager at VTT uh, Sensing Solutions Research Area. And I want to warmly welcome you all for this XMind project final event on this real time material X ray analysis for efficient and sustainable mining. Uh, as Janne already explained, XMind has been a long project over four years, extensive research. And uh, as we all know, past one and a half years has been very challenging due to COVID pandemic. So, no physical meetings or visits, challenging or even impossible to arrange testing and uh, demonstrator activities. So I want to thank all XMAN partners for best efforts to complete the goals of the project. There is still uh, one more push, push for everybody towards final review, which is in uh, November, to finalize all the documents and demonstrators. So I wish that everybody have, have still good energy to finalize everything. I also want to thank European Commission for funding of the project as well as guidance to the project and also flexibility during these extraordinary times. And also, Janne, very many thanks for you for coordinating this effort. It has been a huge project and a lot of, lot of happening. So <clears throat> I don't have anything more to say, so I wish you fruitful uh, uh, workshop and uh, and uh, let's go on. Thank you. Thank you, Jukka. Let's continue with the program. So I would like to introduce Mr. Stefan Sadbom, who is the senior exploration geologist at Bereskraft Bereslagen uh, there in, in Sweden. He is the leader of uh, XMind dissemination and communication activities, and he will act as the moderator together with me in this meeting. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, nice to see so many icons for people attending the meeting. Of course, we would have liked to meet you all in person, but the way it is, we can do this the best out of this. Um, as Maria said before and Janne said, you will not be able to ask questions out loudly, but we have the chat in chat functionality activated. So if you have questions, please write in there. I will collect questions. And if there is time, we will let the presenters answer directly after the presentation or in breaks or as a last resort, we will post answers on the home page afterwards. Um, yeah, so look, look forward to a good meeting, Janne. Thanks, Stefan. So the next step on the agenda is uh, introduction to XMind sensor and prototype development. I will uh, give a short introduction and then uh, we will hear three interesting presentations. And these are the presenters, uh, myself and uh, Mr. Stepan Polanski, who is an imaging specialist at Advacam in the Czech Republic. And then we will have a presentation from Peter Katarzynski, who is an engineer manager at Ant Micro Company in Poland. 
And uh, the last presenter uh, of this first part is Mikael Bergqvist, who is the CTO of uh, Or Explore AB in Sweden. Introduction to Xmind sensor development. So uh, this is a nutshell of uh, the Xmind project activities. We start with uh, sensor development, and uh, those sensors uh, have been integrated in two uh, large-scale prototypes, a real core scanning prototype and a mineral sorting prototype. And then those uh, prototypes and the 3D geomodeling part of the project uh, have been piloted in, in, at four mines uh, participating in the project across Europe. And uh, the sensor development, we have uh, three different types of sensors. The first type is a CDTA camera prototypes, and they are uh, different prototypes uh, for different purposes. For example, different prototypes for the record scanner and for the uh, mineral sorting system. Um, and then we have uh, the 3D camera, 3D scanner prototypes from, from Antmicro. And, uh, XRF uh, spectrometer prototypes uh, that have been developed by ORIT4. And these uh, uh, X-ray cameras developed by Advacam, the uh, new thing is that they are high-speed, high-resolution, multi-energy X-ray sensors. That's, that's really new. And uh, the 3D scanners are high-speed 3D scanning, scanning cameras with uh, object tracking. And uh, Or Explorer is doing a breakthrough in XRF spectroscopy. And uh, those sensors have been integrated into the so called sensor testing platform at VTT uh, to test uh, the sensor performance and uh, to the drill core scanner at Or Explorer and to the containerized sorting prototype at COMEX. And COMEX also has a research sorting facility a big hole where they can test uh, all different things related to uh, mineral sorting with different sensors. Okay, that this was the introduction part. And uh, now the next presenter will be Stepan Polanski from Advacam, and he will tell us about the fast single photon counting X-ray cameras. Uh, Stepan. Please, the floor is yours. Could you please share your presentation and start? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can, and we can see your presentation. Uh, excellent. So I can start. Uh, so, Jana, thank you for the introduction. And uh, today, uh, I'd like to talk uh, a little bit about fast single photon counting detectors. Uh, so good morning, everybody. And uh, first of all, I would like to introduce our company a little bit. So uh, the Adva company, uh, Advacam company is divided into two uh, main parts. Uh, first part is located in Espo in Finland and is focusing on uh, semiconductor sensors and modules. And the second part is located in uh, Prague, in Czech Republic, and uh, we are developing uh, cameras and solutions. And also we've got a small representative office in uh, USA. Uh, the Ervacam company offers uh, semiconductors, sensor fabrication and micro packaging, and also uh, high resolution particle counting imaging detectors with energy sensitivity. Uh, we are developing uh, new radiation imaging solutions and methods. Uh, all key technologies are available in-house. It means uh, that uh, we've got uh, in our hands uh, all production of semiconductors, uh, hardware, software, we've got laboratories, methods, and uh, all processes are covered uh, by our company. Uh, on this slide, uh, you can see typical applications of Advacam cameras. Uh, for example, non-destructive testing like uh, scanning composites or welds or uh, biology, uh, biology applications uh, like preclinical studies. 
Uh, we are also involved in uh, uh, some uh, European Space Agency projects uh, in space applications. Uh, also, we are uh, certified by NASA and uh, we are also participating in fundamental research uh, uh, in CERN, uh, where our cameras are used for particle tracking. Uh, in this project, our main goal is to develop X-ray transmission cameras suitable for uh, two machines, two prototypes. Uh, the first prototype uh, is X-Analyzer, it's a drill, drill core scanner. Uh, you will hear more about this uh, machine uh, in our Explorers presentation, uh, but our camera is uh, also part of this machine, it's an X-ray detector. And the second ma uh, machine uh, developed in this project is x analyzer Sorter. Uh, it's a mineral sorting conveyor belt system and it, it also contains uh, our high-speed camera. Uh, one of the advantages of our technology is uh, multi-energy uh, radiography. Uh, sometimes it's called, uh, called uh, color radiography. Uh, it means that uh, we are able to acquire uh, transmission images uh, with different energy sensitivity, different thresholds and each transmission scan is converted to equivalent thickness of uh, reference material. Uh, it means that different materials in sample show different spectral dependen dependency. The example is on the left side of uh, this slide on pictures A, B, C. Uh, the first picture A is attenuation image, B is material variation, but uh, the most interesting is uh, picture C. It's uh, material information, color encoded, and in this picture, uh, the yellow color and uh, red color represents uh, high density inclusions and uh, uh, the blue color is representing uh, uh, low density rock material. And the similar example is on the right side, uh, there are four stones uh, measured on the uh, belt. And uh, here you can see again example that two different materials can be clearly identified in the spectral area. And here is a video, and in this video you can see installation uh, in uh, COMEX facility in Poland, uh, we did last year. Uh, this is a real-time video where the build speed is 1.5 meters per second, and you can nicely see uh, details of stones with a pixel resolution uh, 55 micrometers. Uh, it is like a uh, scan a room uh, 4 by 3 meters, uh, actually it's the size of my bedroom. And uh, you can see details like a single hair or dust particles on the floor. And we've been able to scan this area in 10 seconds. Uh, okay, and during development, uh, we passed uh, through a long way, but uh, not every time it was easy. Uh, we faced uh, too many challenges and failures, uh, like a fluid detector by, by water coolant because of some broken pipe inside. Uh, we burned several sensors after uh, explosion of tantalum capacitor and we, uh, also one challenge uh, was uh, testing of fast moving objects in laboratory conditions. Uh, here I've got one video from this testing and as, as a first test we used a drilling machine for simulating uh, fast moving objects and we've been able to uh, scan uh, this flash drive uh, with a speed 3.7 meters per second and that's, that was the first test of our uh, fast camera. Uh, here is a portfolio of Advacam cameras uh, developed within the Xmind project. Uh, I don't want to go into the details uh, but I would like to point out that we started in 2018 with a first prototype with width uh, 7 centimeters and uh, speed 50 frames per second. And uh, last year we finished uh, the prototype, uh, which has width uh, 42 centimeters, and it's able to run uh, with speed uh, 450 frames per second. It means that uh, during three years we uh, improved our resolution, resolution of our camera uh, by a factor of six, and uh, the speed was upgraded uh, nine times. And uh, in this project, we also developed uh, several related devices uh, like uh, probing stations, calibration setups, uh, some methodology. And uh, because of COVID, COVID pandemic, pandemic and then traveling, uh, we also constructed our small laboratory conveyor belt system uh, for testing our products. You can see this system on the, on the picture. 
And uh, here is one example of measurement with this system. Uh, we scanned a batch of semi-finished uh, French cakes uh, with uh, some ceramic figures inside. And uh, you can uh, nicely recognize all fruits and other structures uh, in, this, in this cake. And uh, here uh, on my last slide, uh, I'd like to say that uh, there are many project outputs beneficial for Arvacam. Uh, we developed three types of readout interfaces uh, for Medipix 3 based cameras, and we already made products from them. Uh, it means that outputs uh, already started commercial. Uh, also, we see uh, great potential for this technology, uh, not only in mining applications, uh, but also in food industry, automotive, security, biology, and some other fields. And uh, last but not least, uh, Arvacam also gained a strong and re reliable partners in XMind Consortium, and uh, it is also very val valuable. And at the end, uh, I've got this short uh, funny video. Uh, it was also acquired with our fast uh, so you can guess what this uh, what animal is uh, on the right side uh, on the left side uh, on the picture exact image and maybe you are right uh, it's a mouse and uh, here is a, a real time video uh, from measurement and uh, it's really fun. you can even see uh, the heartbeat of the mouse uh, it's very fast it's uh, 700 beats per minute uh, and uh, that's all from my side uh, you can ask questions if you want uh, right now, or you can contact me on uh, my uh, email. And uh, thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you very much, Stefan. Uh, very impressive. Um, obviously, this is really high tech technology you're using here. Uh, and you mentioned a few uses also outside the mining industry. Are these already on the move or are they just ideas? Uh, actually, uh, there was uh, one uh, one application uh, that was scanning French cakes. Uh, it, uh, it is for our pa partner uh, from Holland, and they would like to use this technology for uh, scanning in the food industry. Yeah, it's easy to see that this will be something that can develop further. Um, no one has posted any questions in the chat so far. Uh, Give a few seconds if someone has something on their mind. Meanwhile, I think we can start prepare for the next presenter, which is Peter Katarzynski from Ant Micro. Um, so thank you very much, Stefan. And the audience, if you have questions to Stefan, you can post them in the chat and we'll forward them to Stefan afterwards. So Peter, welcome and please give us your presentation. OK. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, do you hear me? Can you see my presentation? I can hear you and I can see the presentation. Thank you. OK, perfect. Right, so hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Peter and I represent a company called Ant Micro. Uh, the company uh, has been on the market since, 90, uh, since uh, 2008, so it's over 11 years right now. And what we typically do, we are building open source platforms. We are also a technology integrator, which helps our customers to combine different technologies, different methodologies and approaches into a single uh, product. Um, we work a lot with uh, industrial Internet of Things and many embedded systems that mostly cover vision systems and that uh, includes either artificial intelligence and machine learning applications and uh, also some kind, some kind of communication solutions, right? And those applications are mostly applied in defense, security, access control, authentication, we also do some projects for mining, for agriculture, for quality assurance, uh, everywhere where uh, we can combine this vision systems with artificial intelligence, detection, tracking and related uh, activities, right? So that also covers autonomous vehicles, robotics, aerospace or uh, so to say industrial automation. We are highly motivated by the um, open source and open hardware 
projects and communities. So we are also a member of Linux Foundation, the Zephyr Projects and Chips Alliance, along with Open Power Foundation. We also uh, explore and research on the Risk Five uh, technology, which uh, is tightly coupled to developing new platforms and new uh, CPUs. Um, as I mentioned, we are building our projects and also investigate new design methodologies, uh, which is uh, highly highly driven by open source. So. Uh, as a company, we offer software and hardware development solutions, and that includes uh, building and designing hardware platforms, either at a stage of proof of concept and also uh, on a full-fledged project uh, or product development. Um, uh, we also build software, um, which means we prepare embedded systems. Uh, we integrate device drivers to those systems. We prepare port support packages and combine them with automated build systems, which allows to uh, create system images using the cloud uh, system. Uh, when it comes to precise timing and precise analysis, we use uh, FPGA technology and we also explore the ASIC uh, technology just to provide uh, the exact and accurate uh, data um, processing. We also uh, investigate and develop the tools uh, that can be used for development and testing of uh, new projects. Uh, today I'd like to outline the 3D scanner or the 3D camera that has already been uh, referenced by Jana. So uh, basically the 3D scanner uh, as we can introduce it as a standalone industrial scanner, which has like a basic functionality, uh, which is scanning the content of the conveyor belt with a pair of day cameras. And uh, after this scanning, it automatically detects uh, the objects on the scene and returns the geometrical information about the outline of the object, the relative position of the object, and also some kind of a center point, which might come in handy for the sorting application. It also generates a 3D profiles or so to say a depth, 3D um, maps of the of the observed uh, scene. Uh, all those data is uh, prepared internally inside the scanner and the outcomes are uh, returned over Ethernet, which is pretty mature and pretty universal media. media. So it's possible to integrate the outcomes of the scanner with the rest of the system quite easily. Um, we also treat this 3D uh, scanner as some kind of an experimental platform. Right? That's why uh, we decided to divide the internal structure of this scanner into a several modules. And those modules can be uh, developed, fine-tuned and adjusted independently depending on the application uh, for the Xmind project, uh, we've also well updated and uh, developed this platform towards or sorting of course uh, with special uh, emphasis put on the uh, fast processing of the rocks and uh, getting the, the the object tracking uh, up and running uh, but in order to uh, summarize the the internal structure the scanner is composed of the image acquisition module which has a pair of uh, high speed over full hd resolution sensors with dedicated interchangeable optics uh, then we've got a processing module which is fpga driven and it uh, processes the image on the pixel level which means we can capture several pictures and do the analysis on on the several pictures of the of the image then we've got another module which is uh, driven by the graphical processing unit and that module is responsible for um, uh, doing the object tracking and um, detection. There's also a video converter board which allows for uh, getting the video preview. Right now we are supporting HDMI but it's easily it's possible to implement any other output like SDI, camera link or GMSL. 
And it's worth to mention that this modular structure allows to preview both the captured video and processed video, and those previews can be obtained and accessed independently. So you've got like a full overview what's going on in this uh, processing flow. Um, apart from that, there's also a dedicated backplane and debug board, which allows for um, power distribution and also exposes a couple of debug interfaces, which uh, simplifies the device integration and uh, modifications. I think it's also worth to mention that as an open source driven company, we've decided to release the designs of the processing boards as open source hardware, so you can find those designs or our GitHub if you're curious on how it's build or how it's organized uh, that the basic information is there and if you're interested in modifying such a scanner or building building a similar one we're more than happy to to help you with that when it comes to the flow of the scanning uh, basically it's um, it starts with uh, getting the frames from the two image sensors and this is synchronized the, this is synchronized by the fpga system uh, then we automatically calculate the offsets between corresponding pixels, and that offset actually represents uh, a disparity map, which is then interpreted as the 3D profile of the observed scene. Uh, knowing the geometry of the lens of the installation, uh, we can convert those offsets into physical offsets, so we can express the disparity map in millimeters, for instance. And uh, that is the entry point for object detection and tracking, right? So we can uh, track the objects and then uh, we can send the summary, uh, which is composed of the 3D profile along with a list of detected objects. And that information can be sent over Ethernet to a host PC. Um, here you can see some sample outcomes of the scanner. So uh, in the center of the slide, you can see uh, the preview of the disparity map. The disparity map is presented as a grayscale image. The brighter colors represent the taller objects, right? So judging from the outline of this single rock that is presented in the center of the slide, you can see uh, how it's uh, oriented in the, in the 3D space and what's the profile of it. That information uh, or those windows that we can see on the slide right now are acquired on a PC site, right? So that represents the information that has been obtained from the scanner. Apart from the disparity map preview, there are two more sub windows uh, below. One of them represents the object location uh, on the scene with outline detected and the bounding box um, drawn around the object. And on the right, we've got uh, text, which represents a textual stream that is sent by the scanner. That stream is formulated in XML format, so this is a standardized uh, format for exchanging data. It's readable both for humans and for machines, so it's quite easily to preview what objects were detected on the scene and what are their location and locations and uh, geometries. Apart from uh, just getting a preview of the disparity map, it's also possible to project this map into some kind of a 3D perspective scene. So on the right, you can see a couple of rocks and their projection on some kind of a abstract uh, 3D scene um, that is rendered on a PC. Okay, I also have a couple of movies showing on how it works uh, in like real, real life or real time. So on the left, we've got a movie with uh, a couple of objects that are detected with uh, 20 frames per second. And these are the objects that are actually received. So these are the footages that are received by the, by the host PC. And this detection is followed by uh, tracking. As you can see, there are bounding boxes that are uh, constantly being uh, drawn and updated on the, on the scene. And then uh, on the right, uh, you can see how it works when the scanner is synchronized with a belt running at 1.5 meter per second, right? So it's possible to set a threshold and to uh, observe and detect the objects that are uh, residing on the, uh, on the uh, conveyor belt. Okay, 
just to summarize, uh, during the course of the XMind project, we've uh, created a 3D scanner, which is, I, on one hand, it's an experimental platform, but on the other hand, it can be used as a recognized, dustproof, passively cooled scanner, which is also fully configurable. Thank you. Mm, thank you very much, Peter. Uh, very nice images there with the moving objects. What is the resolution of these objects? How small things can you see with accuracy? So the optics and the mechanical arrangement we use right now allow us to, to see the objects as small as like uh, several millimeters, I would say over five millimeters. It can be changed by changing the optics and the elevation height. Uh, as I mentioned, the device is modular, and so if a bigger resolution is needed, uh, we can change the sensor or the optics or the arrangement inside or above the, uh, the conveyor belt. And the mm -hmm. viewing area of the sensor itself, as we saw it on the movie, right now is uh, 15 millimeters in length so we are scanning 50, uh, sorry 15 centimeters so we are scanning 50 centimeters of the belt length at a time and the width of the scan right now is uh, more or less 45 centimeters okay and being in the mining industry i know there's a lot of vibrations and dust so one thing is objects moving on a conveyor belt will not be perfectly still. They might vibrate slightly and there's also dust in the surrounding. How do you handle that? So the installation we of the scanner we have at the COMEX facility uh, will offer some kind of anti-dust solution. So there are vent ventilators or fans to remove the dust from the particles before they enter the scanners. And, and I think it's a common installation also for for another for 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 another sensors as and when it comes to the vibration it's in this application we are using it right now it's resolved by placing the objects on the belt and letting them stabilize right so there's like a substantial distance on the belt uh, before uh, the particles enter the scanning area and at this distance they should stabilize on the belt right so so that's that's how we handle it right now yeah okay good thank you i'm looking at the chat um and right now there is no question I give a second if someone wants to add something meanwhile uh, i think the next presenter michael bergqvist from or explorer can start prepare himself uh, and there is no question coming in here. No, I, I have uh, one question. Um, Peter, in your in the uh, uh, first part of your presentation, you uh, spoke about the open hardware and open software and uh, that kind of things. And I know in the uh, machine vision field, there are commercial providers uh, uh, of uh, software packages and hardware packages, and uh, how would you compare the open software, open hardware to those commercial providers? Uh, well, I think it strongly depends on the application. Uh, I just wanted to stress that we present the reference designs of the processing platforms, and that in most cases is just an entry point for um updating those platforms or fine-tuning those platforms into a particular application right but uh it's hard to compare against any of like a dedicated solution for for the sorting so to say right we we treat those uh designs mostly as some kind of a reference designs or platforms that are that can be used also independently from the sorting application and uh, at this stage, we're not publishing the, the sorting uh, or detection algorithm. So it's also hard to compare it against, against uh, that, that solutions, right? But I think it's enough to say that we are relayed on Linux distributions. We use OpenCV. We use some kind of a CUDA libraries for objects or image processing. So uh, that is something we uh, we have under the, the hood, right, so to say. Great, thanks. Okay, and uh, next presenter then, a few minutes before the scheduled time, but I think we proceed. There's no questions in the chat, 
So Mikael Bergqvist from Or Explore, are you ready to give your presentation? And you have a few minutes extra available if you want to. Welcome, Mikael. Thank you, Stefan. Um, I think I will stick to the to the length that we have planned and um, go along with my presentation. So I'm the CTO of Or Explore <clears throat> and uh, one of the founders. Um, and uh, let's um, let's start the presentation here. So, yeah, we can see your desktop at the moment. And now it's coming to, we see both the first and the second slide. And now, now we see the first slide only. Yeah, excellent Good. presentation mode. Thank you. Good. Uh, so thank you. Um, yes, um, Or Explore is, is one of the, the um, initiators of, of the uh, XMind project, and we are very proud of being part of this. Um, I will present uh, uh, in this session one of the uh, achievements that ha has been done throughout the, proce the uh, process of this project. And uh, we can call it a fast sensitive spectrometer. And I will give the, the reasons why this is important. Um, first, a little bit about uh, Or Explore itself. Uh, since um, not everybody in the audience would be listening to the afternoon session, uh, where I actually will repeat this information again. Or Explore was founded in 2010 in Sweden, uh, based on uh, medical radiology research and uh, detection techniques and physics, and also further including nowadays more of the medical imaging background. Um, we build on advanced product development and use uh, novel X-ray technology, um, state-of-the-art detection techniques, and high-performance computing to uh, to perform the tasks that we do. We are since uh, 2017 a subsidiary of Swick Mining Services in in Australia. <clears throat> we have two offices. Uh, we were founded and and uh, uh, continue to um, do the technical and, and um, methodology development and uh, research and also the manufacturing and EMEA sales in Sweden from our Stockholm office. And from Australia, we are um, looking forward to, to having the head office and the APEC sales. And here is also, as in Sweden, an in-house lab facility and also service for um, the APEC region. We have um, a long tradition uh, compared to our, our company age of uh, partaking in innovation projects and innovation, uh, continuous innovation is, is uh, what we are building our techni technologies on. Uh, currently we are involved in, in the XMind project whose event you're, you are visiting now. And uh, before that, we have been part of um, uh, EIT raw material projects like the Enhanced Exploration, Enex, and uh, the Eramin project, uh, Maxi, where we collaborated with uh, many of the uh, partners that now are part of the, the XMine and formed the XMine project. Also, I will tell you a little bit about uh, one project uh, from Vinova, Smart Data Electronic System, system. Uh, if you are a little bit wide, <laughs> wide open in, in in your in your imagination, you understand it. It's smarter electronic systems, and um, uh, where we are using some parts from. Uh, uh, we have a Swedish uh, also um, strategic innovation for raw material pr uh, project that we were part of before. Index that we also build upon when when uh, uh, now developing our our product actually. The current product is the GeoCore X10, a drill core analyzer that uses a combination of, of transmission, X-ray, 
X-ray fluorescence and the sample weight. It uh, yields uh, tom high image tomographic uh, um, data uh, where you can get excellent structural uh, information from. It is um, targeting base metals, but it actually measures from sulfur up to uh, uranium in, in its uh, base configuration. But uh, as we see uh, in the beginning of this project, uh, uh, there is a lower sensitivity for both the lighter elements and for the higher, the, the heavier elements, the, the, the ones with a heavier uh, uh, nucleus, a larger uh, atomic number. And, and also, and this is for different reasons, but, but both these regions of the periodic table, they are more difficult to detect. Uh, in, during the project, there has been an implementation of a uh, good and working uh, and in, now uh, deployed solution for lighter elements with something we call the software X-ray module that is now uh, deployed in the machine. Uh, but we will have a look uh, in a short while on, on the heavier element side. <clears throat> we also, during the project, um, uh, developed the ability to present density variation and also some rock mechanical data apart from the elemental concentrations and the structural information. We also now achieved a six meter per hour scanning speed. So the challenge now that remains, what about the gold and uh, the platinum group elements? We found here a need for a high speed and high sensitivity spectrometer. Uh, and the goals were set fairly, fairly high and, and fairly advanced, which is 0.5 ppm per meter detection of, of gold and, and, and platinum and the likes, but with min maintained scan speed. So how, how to go about scanning at the same speed, but then also detecting these heavier atoms, and which are normally very scarce and very small quantities across the um, the uh, mineralizations, and hence the price they 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 uh, they uh, have. This is why they are so expensive and so sought for. They are they are very rare and very valuable. So we need the same or better than state of the art energy resolution, which is what we, we use for, for actually uh, um, telling that this is actually gold or this is actually platinum or iridium or what not. And we concluded that we have to build a parallel design with uh, many detectors. And it turns out we have to go up to not tenfold of the number of detectors, but hundredfold. And this this uh, demands cooling for the detection efficiency, and it uh, comes with other challenges as well. And we also need 1000 times the data rate of, of a single spectrometer or single spectrometer channel, that, that's the normal case. During the, the course of the project, we have had um, several prototype generations build of the spectrometer we have uh, we began with using discrete analog electronics. Uh, this wasn't enough, and we had to turn to uh, a custom analog ASIC uh, with parallel charge amplifiers inside. And uh, <clears throat> this is something that we now can can utilize from a another research and innovation project this time from Vinova, the one that was within the Smarter Electronic System project, uh, program, excuse me. And uh, this project is called Smart Multicanals Ladningsverstärkare, translates into Smart Multi-Channel Charge Amplifier. And this is together with Luleå Technik University and uh, the technology company Greppet in Luleå, but also uh, incorporates uh, the, uh, the final um, help with layout and manufacturing and verification of the layout from Fraunhofer uh, in Germany. 
we have now been using the first and the second generation of uh, ASICs from that project. We have been through a, a number of housings for, for the spectrometer. We have had two generations of cryogenic cooling systems. We have had uh, severe problems with vibrational decoupling and and uh, in in the same way as as uh, as um, you heard from the Advacam presentation in the beginning, uh, we've also had a lot of challenges with uh, with systems actually being destroyed, both by vibrations and by hitting unfortunate uh, 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 combinations of vacuum and high voltage. So uh, we also actually destroyed a number of, of detectors just by these, uh, these hit, hitting these um, unfortunate uh, maximum values for, for uh, where things break down. And um, I will show you some of, of the, the highlights and, and some, some parts here. We have uh, like the, the latest generation of the, the ASIC um, shown with also um, uh, the actual, uh, they are actually naked, you see inside the ASICs here, uh, two of them mounted here, and you see also the bounding threads and these um, ASICs, if we go to a, a close up of it, you will see the precision by which these things need to be uh, bonded into the, the electronics uh, circuit boards. We have, uh, as also is, is very common in this type of project, we have made new type of connections into the industry. We have made new connections uh, with new possible partners for manufacturing for development and strength and also this uh, ecosystem and this collaboration. Here are some examples of the generations of, of the concepts for cooling and housing. And in the middle you see, in the center you see one of the these uh, coolers which turned out to have too low efficiency. We need to go down to, to cryogenic temperatures and the third generation here is now what we are using. It also sh shows the outline of the whole ho housing for the for the spectrometer, which is only a small part uh, in the middle of the right uh, hand image, uh, where there is a, a circuit board uh, that goes like bridging uh, between the inner parts and the outer part. Here is an example uh, of uh, going from design to implementation. Uh, one of the high speed data processing boards uh, and uh, having optical fiber connections down to the to the left up to um, high speed links uh, in the blue ones goes from the uh, data acquisition board. Here is the same for the, the board you saw in, in uh, one of the, the CAD drawings, the one to the, to the right, the most right one. The board that bridges into the vacuum and out from the vacuum, and um, also um, it um, carries the fast analog um, to digital converters. Here is an example of the system being bench tested um, and uh, you see the, the, the signals on an, in this case on an oscilloscope to test the different channels. And finally, we, we come to where we are now. The system is mounted inside one of our machines and this machine has no, as we call them, beautiful uh, doors on it. So it's just the, the naked machine. It can be uh, closed, of course, to be able to scan uh, drill cores inside, but it doesn't have the automatic mechanism and and uh, not a, a nice entry um, carousel, as we call it, to uh, to put lots of samples at the same time. But it is the, the inner workings of it, and we see here that uh, we have 
signals from eight channels because we have eight channels populated and uh, we produce signals and spectra and uh, it's running currently uh, in the lab it's actually running um, all day to do really make sure that it withstands long um, running times and the current status and the current uh, situation it's we have verified the data acquisition we have verified the data processing we have verified the spectral performance but now we have to further tune the system and work more with the calibration and then do actual measurements on core and then document and report of, about the system in the in the project so that's that's all for me and uh, and thank you if you have questions other than that what you put in the chat here um, you can reach me at me can dot at or explore dot com. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mikael. Um, yeah, lots of technical stuff in this, just like the previous uh, two presenters from Advacam and Ant Micro. Um, a, a very <laughs> simple, difficult question. How much of what we do in Xmine in these technologies is from the shelf, so to speak. How much is pure first time ever developments? In, in this uh, in this part, in this spectrometer uh, part of the project, I would say that almost nothing is from the shelf. So we are we are the, the, of course the the, the pure the uh, semiconductor, the, the diodes made of uh, cadmium telluride that we use as detector elements, they are bought, but but individually, and they are then mounted into special purpose holders and uh, circuit boards and uh, connectors, and then purpose made uh, circuit boards for, uh, and, all, and also actually the ADC converters that we are using, they were not available from the beginning, we got them as as samples because it was a next generation uh, analog to digital converters, and we're using uh, state of the art signal processing techniques with uh, not with processors but with uh, uh, something called field application programmable circuits. This, these FPGAs are available off the shelf, but then there there, there is um, special purpose made um, uh, software or it's called firmware in these cases. Uh, implemented in these circuits, and then all the the uh, software that is needed uh, for handling this data transfers is purpose made, and also then uh, following that the algorithms to utilize the data that comes out of it and and goes into combined together with uh, um, the transmission camera data so that we can perform the measurements the way we like in the machine. So in this part almost nothing is is uh, off the shelf what is off the shelf is we are using also linux as the underlying operating systems uh, also for the, for these parts and we use a lot of uh, uh, open source tools for for uh, software uh, control and, and version control and uh, we also uh, build upon these parts for for uh, being able to connect these devices to the network and log in remotely and and whatnot those things are available but this the hardware parts and and those more detailed workings they they are not available so that's mm. that's state of the art yeah fascinating thank you Mikael. i'm looking at the the chat and right now there is no questions and i think that means that we are more or less precisely on time for a short break now um, Janne, you have some slides just showing the what's happening next. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so uh, now on the agenda we have a short break, and after the break at uh, 10, 10 uh, we will have presentations about the XMind prototypes in the mining value chain. But, uh, let's now have uh, the short break and the session will continue at uh, 10 past 10. Yeah.
And um, while you have the break, you of course you're welcome to add questions to the chat, and we'll collect them to get answers later on during the day. Yeah, and please yeah. remain in this meeting. So, yeah, uh, and we will continue at uh, 10:10. Welcome back and have a nice break.